Hey guys. How many of you um, were at Selenium Conf last year? Okay, a few of you. Um, hopefully more of the people. We're recording all these talks. We're going to be putting them up on Tinternet um, so every, everyone can watch. Um, hopefully there will be people who have watched all the videos. Right? Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, this is going to be what's happened in the past year since Selenium Conf uh, 2011. We're now in 2012. Um, before I begin that, a uh, couple of essential points. Um, apparently, the, the cool thing to do is to tell people you're on Twitter. Um, I'm on Twitter. That's my handle, um, SHS96C. You will forget it almost instantly. Uh, I'm told that this picture is important. It's appeared in many presentations. I don't know why it's important, but it is. I'm also told that pictures of kittens are important, and I don't know why, except they're adorable. Love kittens. Couldn't eat a whole one, but. Um, so, I mean, let's take a look back at the year that we've had. Ooh. Um, so I think, you know, we'll, we'll go by the numbers to start with. Uh, on July the 7th, 2011, um, after a lot of brouhaha and umming and ahhing and what the heck are we going to do, uh, we finally released Selenium 2.0. It was officially 2.0.0, um, because we have three numbers in the number. Um, that introduced the first stable version of the WebDriver API, which was one of their key features. Um, and it was a drop-in replacement for Selenium RC. So if you're using the sort of Selenium RC APIs, you could just drop in this new jar, and away you went. And you know, we started doing bug fixes and interesting things like that. On April the 11th, <coughs> 2012, we released 2.21 in, uh, in a handful of months, less than a year, we've done 21 releases of um, Selenium. Now, that averages out at just over one every 10 days. So we have been going from a fairly slow release process to an incredibly rapid release process. We are now sort of churning through these. Um, the nice thing with this is that hopefully we get bug fixes in faster um, and you find out how great it is, and hopefully we don't introduce bugs that quickly. I mean, I say hopefully, right? Um, in that process, I think about three people have held the release bacon. Does anyone know what the release bacon is? A handful of people know what the release bacon is. The release bacon is a result of a terrible typo. Um, the idea was that it would be one person coordinating each release, right? Um, and that person would have the release baton. It turns out that not all of us are good typers. Um, and somebody said, ah, OK, uh, who's got the release bacon? And it seemed like a really nice idea, right? Um, so uh, yeah, various people have done it. Christian Rosenwald uh, was the most recent handler of the bacon. I, I don't know, is that how you describe it? Probably, right? Uh, Christian, yes, the most recent handler of the bacon. Um, we're 2.21. Uh, uh, I've done it quite a lot of times. I think Aaron Messery has done a couple of releases. Um, have I forgotten anything? Anyone? David Burns, David Burns has held the release bacon, so four people. Um, it, it, it's probably fairly manky bacon right now. Um, we should get some fresh rashers, right? That would be good. Um, so, you know, how do we actually release 21 times in less than a year and an average of about once every 10 to 14 days. <clears throat> the only possible way we can do this is because uh, Daniel Wagner Hall spent a couple of months, I think it was, setting up our continuous integration system. That continuous integration system runs every single test in the project, um, every time we check in, on every single browser that we claim to support. So Firefox 3, 3.5, 3.6, 4, blah, 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 all the way up to how, whatever it is. All the variants of IE that we support, IE 6 to 9. Um, you name it, they get run. Um, we wouldn't be able to do that level of testing without the help of Source Labs. They provide all the infrastructure that we use for running our tests, and I think we're running you know, thousands of hours of tests every day because you know, we get about 100 check-ins a week in that code base. It's an incredibly rapidly moving code base, and the only way we can keep it stable is because we've got a good continuous integration process. Um, the reason why the last release took a long time was because Christian quite rightly said, 
If the continuous integration server isn't green, we probably shouldn't be happy with that. And he's entirely correct. Um, so we've done a lot of work greening the tests. I think the next two releases are just going to be tidying up the sort of minor sources of instability that we found and addressing those properly. So thank you to Source Labs for the continuous integration system. Taking a look at the numbers since we released uh, Selenium 2.0, we are seeing about 1,500 downloads a day from the main Selenium project. That excludes all of the Maven downloads, which um, are about the same, I believe. Um, that number is trending upwards. It's becoming more popular. Thank you to all for downloading it. Um, whichever one of you has got that script that repeatedly downloads it, <laughs> thank you. If you can make it a little faster, that would be good. Um, but that level of downloads pales into insignificance, uh, where you see the Ruby gem, um, which uh, Yari, Yari Bakken, where are you? Yari is a coding machine, right? I can be nice about him because he's not here. Um, he's done the mobile apps that, that you hopefully have on your phones. Um, he's done the Ruby bindings. He works in the water web driver. He does, you know, he, wherever you go, if it's written in Ruby, Yari is doing something amazing, right? Um, and you can see he's doing something amazing because over the lifetime of the, the Ruby, web, uh, the um, Selenium WebDriver gem, it's been downloaded over 1.7 million times. That's a lot. I can't quite comprehend it. It, it makes the Java numbers, which I thought were good, look bad. <clears throat> and um, I thought, you know, before I do this, I wonder how we managed to get 100 check-ins every day. Um, so I had a look at who has the commit bit, who can make changes to our code base. There are slightly over 60 people with the commit bit. Um, it turns out it's pretty easy to get it. Um, and even if you don't check in very often, well, we don't take it away. Um, the actual core team is considerably smaller. Um, there are key individuals who are doing a just vast amount of work. So Yari, I've already mentioned. Um, Jim over here, who you saw yesterday talking about the IE driver, looks after IE and C Sharp. Um, you know, the many Daves look after the Ruby, uh, the, the Python even. Um, Dave Burns in particular, who can't be with us today. He's not dead, he's just in a different country. <laughs> I just realized that. It's like, I haven't flushed him down the toilet or anything like that, like a goldfish. Yes. May, may he rest in peace because he's having a nap. Um, you know, and, and we've got fantastic contributions from the community. I mean, the PHP bindings. Um, are currently being maintained by Facebook um, independently of the core project, uh, and that's fantastic. You know, the Perl bindings are very similar for, for the WebDriver API, the Selenium WebDriver API, maintained independently um, by people who are passionate about a particular language. <coughs> so, you know, we've got an amazing community. Um, you guys make me take the check out. It's fantastic. You know, We've got a conference, right? Who'd have thought an open source tool that you know, does a, poking around with a browser could have so many great people and spark so many conversations? Um, so Liz did this yesterday, and I thought it was really interesting. How many of you are developers? Okay. And how many of you are testers? I don't think there's many conferences you can go to where there's such a, a mix of um, skills and focus. And I, I think it's really valuable that. You know, we all get together, we all talk, and we all have that opportunity to learn and share. Um, I know the developers sort of learn from the testers and go, ah, maybe I shouldn't just pass it across the wall. And the testers go, oh, I could, I could automate some of this, and that would make my life a lot easier. Um, that's really good. Of course, you know, it's been a year, um, and a lot has happened in the world of browsers. Firefox, everyone. No Firefox, Mozilla's fantastic little browser, uh, moved from Firefox 3.6 to 11. Um, they adopted the fast release schedule. Uh, it caused us a certain number of headaches um, because we've got binary components and we need to compile those every single time they do a release. So every six weeks, there's a minor flurry. Um, someone files a bug telling us that native events are, are not working. Um, and then we fix it. And then we wait another six weeks. And then they go, it's not working again. That's because the binary components are the things that do the native events. Oh, well, never mind. Um, 3.6 to 11, though, that's incredibly quick. Um, you know, in the past year, Opera Software, um, Andreas did his talk yesterday, you saw that, um, were the first ones to release a third-party implementation 
of Selenium WebDriver. Um, so that was a completely independent implementation of the WebDriver APIs. Right? Uh, when I first saw that, it blew my socks off. And the things that Opera Software do with that are phenomenal. I mean, you know, I think last year we were, we were amazed when we saw the desktop Opera browser doing its stuff at Selenium Conf. Um, you know, this year we saw it on mobile devices. Fantastic stuff. Um, you know, and one of the great ironies is <laughs> quite a few of the core developers, um, Jason Labor, Daniel Logan Hall, myself, Aaron, work at Google. You'd, you'd think that Google would have got the Chrome support in first. Oops. We got there second. Um, and the nice thing about the, the Chrome driver is, again, it's not maintained by the core project. It's maintained by the Chrome development team. And they can do all sorts of clever things. So both Opera and Chrome, um, their native events emulation is fantastically stable and incredibly rapid. Because rather than going into the OS level, well, they just inject directly into the event queue of the browser. So it's fast, reliable, stable, um, really very impressive. And mobile is becoming more important. Um, you know, how many of you five years ago had a mobile phone that you used to browse the internet on a regular basis? Okay, one, one, one person had a Nokia Navigator, I assume. Right. Um, how many of you today have in your pocket a mobile phone that you used to browse the internet? Okay, we heard in Andreas's talk yesterday that, um, you know, mobile penetration of web browsers is Phenomenal, right? And it's starting to dwarf <coughs> desktop browsers. Mobile is becoming more and more important. I'm going to have to deal with that. Android, iOS. I mean, it doesn't help that people keep on releasing new browsers, right? Like Chrome on Android. That thing is incredibly fast, but it's a new browser, and we need to figure out how we're going to support that. Um, people, as well. I mean, it's been a big year. Um, there are new committers on the project. I used to be really proud of the fact that I knew and had met every single person who had the commit bit. I can't say that anymore. The project has just grown so quickly and with so many contributions from so many people around the world that, that I can't keep track. Um, you know, I know people by their, by their handle on the IRC channel. That's, that's the main way that I know these people now. Um, you know, we've got committers scattered around the world from Russia to Norway to America to, uh, to the UK, um, you know, they're just everywhere. It's the project the sun never sets on. I guess I'm allowed to do a British Empire joke in Britain, right? Um, and, you know, people are able to contribute despite the fact that new commitments come up. We've had people change jobs, we've had people lose jobs, um, and we've had people become new parents on the project. You know, um, there's at least six people that I am aware of who have, who have had kids. Uh, many of them are part of the core team developing things. Luke, for example, works at Adobe, does a huge amount of work on the iOS driver. If you use that, you've probably used software that he's been trying to write while nursing a small child. Um, and you know, the, the thing that really matters to me, I said in the previous slide, the community is really good. One of the great places on the internet, as far as I'm concerned, is the Hash Selenium IRC channel. How many of you have actually signed into that ever? It's a great place to be, right? You know, uh, if you haven't been there, you ought to just try and log in occasionally. Uh, you'll see banter, you'll see people learning to program. There's a, a user called Parabola who arrived on the, on the IRC channel one day and he went, I need to do this, I have no idea what I'm doing. And the guys on the channel really nicely helped him sort of find a language that was suitable for him, helped him set up his, in, in his development environment, and then helped him learn how to program. All right. So, I mean, that was an amazing positive thing that I saw coming out of it. And then we shared videos about like Friday by, what's her name? Pardon? Rebecca Black. Rebecca Black, yes. Um, I'm sorry if you've now got that stuck in your head. Um, try to think of War of the Worlds and uh, that instead. Da, da, da. Ba, da, da, ba, da, da. No? Okay, fine. Um, and we share YouTube videos and, and there's jokes and things like that. Um, it feels like a real community of people who just happen to be distributed around the world. There have been no Martians. We may have spotted some canals in the code base, but there are no Martians. 
Ah, yeah. And this happened during the year. I think the trend lines are fairly obvious, right? Um, just amazing. You know, we sit there occasionally and, and we're hacking on the code. And uh, I remember the first time Daniel checked something in and it was like, do you know how many people are downloading this every day? And he goes, oh, no, not really. I'm like 1,500 people a day are downloading it. He goes, what? It suddenly brings it home to you that there's a sort of vast number of people who are looking at it. And charts like this just totally blow me away. Um, you know, and it's thanks to, to all of you people using this software um, and filing bug reports and helping us make it better. I mean, we see the bug reports come in. And a lot of the committers, that's the only thing they see. So they see people who are furious and angry and upset that, you know, they've been trying so hard for so long and it just doesn't work. And then you drop your microphone. There we go. You see? Bugs happen. Um, and it just doesn't work, right? And, and then we see people at the end of their tether. Um, and then, you know, we try and help. If you're ever going to file a bug, learn how to do a reproducible test case. Um, you know, like how nurses and doctors make the worst patients and uh, hairdressers have the worst haircuts. I'm not a hairdresser, by the way. It's clothes, though. Um, well, it turns out testers file the worst bugs. I don't know why, but people who make a professional living from finding problems with software and telling about it when they file bugs, do crazy things. Please help us help you. Let us know the system you're on, um, the page, if you can do a reproducible test case. That's brilliant. If you can't, at least try and tell us how to reproduce, you know, the steps that we should follow. Um, that would make our life really easy. Looking forward. So what are we going to do in the next year? Well, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to keep the lights on. Um, we're going to continue developing the platform. Um, if you take a look at the check-ins that are happening right now, almost all the activity is around the web driver APIs and around the grid. Um, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to sort of formalize what we've done with Selenium RC, which is we're going to put it in maintenance mode. It's not going away. We're going to keep it. But all the active development moving forward is going to focus on the web driver APIs. Okay? The other thing we're going to do is we're going to think about which browsers we actually support. At the moment, we support browsers like Firefox 3. How many of you use Firefox 3.0 on a regular basis? How many of you have users who use Firefox 3.0 on a regular basis? Right. Um, it's got, I, I, I think I had a look at some of the, the stat sites. I think the PS3 browser has more users than Firefox 3.0, and yet we still support it. Um, you know, we, we should take a look at what we actually support and how much effort it is, and try and do that cost-benefit analysis. Um, you know, the Firefox, particularly with the rapid releases, is actually quite hard to maintain. And, but that's an example, right? Um, we want to make sure that the devices and the browsers that you care about have really good automation, but we're a small team, right? So we're going to make sure that we do that by focusing on the things that matter to you guys. I think that's the, the most important thing. Um, I hadn't told Jason about the Selenium RC maintenance thing. You cool with that? No, you told me. Oh, I did, did I? Yeah, more booze then. Excellent. Um, we're going to, yeah, just keep everything plodding on. You'll notice that a lot of the active development that I mentioned was around Grid and the WebDriver APIs. Um, how many of you use Selenium IDE? It's okay, don't be shy. <laughs> like, I think last year we asked that question and people actively sat on their hands. It's like, no, 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 no. Um, it's okay to use it, it's fine. We're going to try and find out, like, everything has had a revamp recently. Um, we got a new Frenchman, Francois, to write the grid, um, taking over from Philippe, who wrote the original grid, uh, grid 1.0 implementation. Seems to be something that we do on the project, the French write grid. Um, uh, and, you know, the WebDriver APIs are there and they're getting a lot of love and attention. Um, we are going to be focusing love and attention on Selenium IDE. Um, after this presentation, we've got Adam, um, who's going to be telling us about uh, Selenium Builder. And we've got Summit, who's been working on Selenium IDE itself. 
And, you know, we'll probably put them in a very small room and compress the walls until one of them walks out. Or some weird amalgam walks out of the two of them, melded together, because we put them in something like the, the Star Wars trash compactor. That would be awesome. <laughs> and we're going to take a look at some of the challenges that you face on such a regular basis. Um, who here has uh, flaky selenium tests? Yes, you all have flaky tests. Um, we've tried to put some things in there to try and address that flakiness. Things like the implicit weights we added. Um, they're there to try and help you sort of paper over some of the cracks that you see. But there are other things that we can do. Who here gets a stale element exception thrown from their tests and goes, but the element's there, right? You, you see it all the time. Like, we should find some way of dealing with that, right? And make it available to you guys. There, I mean, there, there are these things where we could make it a more pleasant environment to work with. Um, people are already layering other APIs on top of um, WebDriver. So the water guys, um, you know, Water 4, uh, which is going to be coming out, is basically going to be based on the WebDriver technology, but it's got the Water API on top of it. Um, there's Fluent Selenium if you're a Java user, which Paul Hammond has been working really hard at. Um, other problems happen, like latency. Um, there's a bell curve of people that are affected by this issue. People who are running tests on their local machine don't tend to notice network latency because loopback tends to be optimized by operating systems to be incredibly rapid. Um, companies like Google and Facebook and, I don't know, eBay, um, eBay? No, I don't know, have virtual machines that they spin up on demand um, and they run the test very close to that and they run the servers basically on the same network and it's incredibly rapid. Um, so they're not affected by latency. But then there's people in the middle. There are people who sort of meet small to medium-sized enterprises and companies that set up Selenium Grid on their own private network and they try and maintain it. Um, and they start to be hit by latency. It turns out both WebDriver and Selenium um, do a lot of network communication in order to do what they do. WebDriver is a chattier API than Selenium RC. Um, and so, you know, you start being hit by the fact that you're now putting not one or two milliseconds between each call, but 10 or 20. And then you go, well, you know, maintaining your own grid of machines is, I'm going to put this mildly, a pain in the ass. Um, you know, how do you, how do you solve that problem? Well, you make use of, of a third party uh, provider like Source Labs, right? But by the time you go out to Source Labs, it's no longer a 10 millisecond delay. You've put four times the internet in between you and each call you make. Your call goes out from your local machine to the source grid. The server on source finally goes, ah, oh, yeah, brilliant, okay. Does the browser, which probably tunnels all the way back to your network, um, collects the response, brilliant, sends that back to the browser, fantastic. And then the response comes back from, you know, Selenium RC or Selenium WebDriver to your machine. Four times the internet. Can you imagine the latency? I can, because I've seen the test run, and it's excruciating sometimes. We're sorry about that. I know Source Labs have put an awful lot of effort into making that possible, uh, making that far more pleasant and nice. But I also know it's a problem that a lot of you face, and we're, we are trying to figure out ways of addressing that. I don't know what that will look like, but we are aware that it's a problem, and we're trying to do nice things. And like I said earlier, mobile is becoming more and more and more important. And there are some real challenges with mobile. Um, desktop browsers were uh, accidentally automatable, right? Um, in a bid to try and do more dynamic stuff, they accidentally put in JavaScript. Uh, and uh, then Microsoft, in a bid to, um, to make uh, the online version of Exchange more usable, added this thing called the XML HTTP request. Um, and then Jason saw that and went, hmm. Browsers have JavaScript, they have a mechanism for doing calls out. I wonder, and wrote Selenium Core. You know, uh, I don't think any of the browser vendors went out there and went, yeah, we're going to make this easy. <coughs> Mobile browsers, you know, it turns out that that JavaScript approach uh, in the, in the 1.0 world of, of, of web, uh, websites was really easy, right? And it worked really well, but now we've got really rich applications. You know, you look at Gmail, um, you go to Facebook, you go to Google+, um, you know, even the eBay site, right? Um, 
so many complex things are going on all the time that pure JavaScript approach didn't work. We need to bind tightly. Um, but there's a sort of Cambrian explosion of browsers, particularly on mobile. Um, it seems like every week someone else forks WebKit and goes, I'm doing my own browser now, thank you very much. Um, you know, the latest one that I'm aware of is Chrome on Android, right? Yeah, need to talk to that Chrome team at some point. Um, the other thing that happens is that people aren't doing pure web apps on their phone, right? Nor are they doing purely native apps. They're doing the apps that are sort of part native and part web-based. You know, I think, I think it feels like the LinkedIn app is, is like that, right? Have you seen LinkedIn on iOS or, um, or, or Android? And then compared it to the website, they're very, very similar. Um, you know, you've got these sort of hybrid apps. And we haven't yet really got a good way of testing those. And yet it's becoming more and more of a pressing issue. Um, so I've got a clock over there. But thank you. Yeah, we're going on that clock. Oh, yeah. Um, so we're trying to make life a bit easier. Um, Opera Software were the, the, the first guys to realize this. Um, and, and, and they were the ones that went, why don't you do this? W3C standard. Who here has heard of our efforts to do a W3C standard for browser automation? How many of you know that we are heading towards the first public working draft? We are pushing very hard. That's one of the first steps that we need to take in order to take um, the WebDriver APIs and convert them to a standard. Right? So Selenium WebDriver will slowly stop doing the implementations. Um, you take a look at it right now. The Opera driver, we just include their implementation in the jar that we make available to you to download. Um, Chrome, you know, you go down to the Chrome driver site, you download those. Uh, within Mozilla, there's a project called Marionette. Sorry, there are Mozillans down here. Um, Marionette, which is an implementation of the WebDriver APIs, and that JSON wire protocol that you see people talking about, um, specifically for mobile devices, and hopefully then moving up on, onto the desktop. Um, it's going to be really interesting, right? And we're going to be able to sort of sit there and focus and look at the issues that you guys face all the time, um, because we can now start taking a look at, you know, not how, to, how do we implement this thing and how do we fix this particular issue, but how are we using this thing? How are we putting it in front of people? How are we making people's lives better? I get asked about source code every odd now and again. Oh, how did that get there? Um, we're currently using Subversion. Who cares about source, code, uh, source control? How many of you have not committed a patch or a bug fix to the project because of the source control system? One person who's just being deliberately obtuse. Um, I, know, I know that man. Um, you know, I, I, but I get the swivel-eyed git zealots wandering up to me all the time going, you must use git. And it's like, why? And it's like, because you must. And it's like, Frankly, you guys scare me, right? <laughs> Calm down a little bit. It's going to be OK. Uh, Christian Rosenwald has spent God knows how long um, trying to figure out how we can keep the history of the project, move it into Git, um, and make it so you don't need to download a ton of stuff. I think we ended up with a gig, a gig and a half of, uh, of the initial Git repo if we just do the straight thing. But we, you know, the history of the project is important. It's nice to look back and go, ah, oh, Jason checked that in. No wonder. <laughs> so we're working on it. So I've deliberately left five minutes uh, in this presentation to field any questions. I should let you know that at the end of the conference, the final closing keynote is a question and answer session with people with the commit bit. Um, so you'll be able to uh, harangue us and, uh, uh, sorry, you'll be able to address specific questions to us uh, there. But if there's anything that I can help with right now, sing out. Yeah, you need to press the button so the red light Hello. comes up. Yeah. Um, do you have any comment about .NET bindings? Do we have any comment about them? Yeah, because I realize you mentioned Java and Python, Ruby, but nothing much about .NET. Uh, well, that was an oversight on my part. 
Um, Jim Evans <laughs> over here has done absolutely sterling work getting the .NET bindings up and running. Um, he's done a hell of a lot of work to make the IE driver, particularly in .NET, just as seamless and as good an experience as possible. Uh, he and I will need to sit down at some point and I'll port some of the changes from C Sharp into um, the Java bindings. But it's basically because of my day job. I use JavaScript, Java, and Python. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I get reminded about Ruby because a chunk of our build is in Ruby, but I don't use .NET on a regular basis. It's an oversight on my part rather than anything deliberate. Anyone else? Oh. <laughs> Hello. That's my little boy. So cute. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to leave you with this picture of kittens then. Thank you, guys. <laughs>